Good morning. I welcome you as we gather on this third Sunday of Easter. Welcome anyone who's worshiping with us for the first time, either here in the sanctuary or online. As we share a few announcements, invite those seated on the inside aisles to sign the friendship pads and to pass them along. And as always, we encourage you to greet one another warmly. The altar flowers this morning are given in memory of Jessica Graham. The cupola is also being lit in her memory. Also, the altar flowers are given in loving memory of Frederick C. Harrison and Lynn Ann Harrison by Mary Lou Harrison. There's also some flowers here. Those are from a service yesterday that was held in the sanctuary to honor the life of our brother Harry Atamian. Also on the welcome table, you will see single-stemmed roses. We invite you to take one if you have a neighbor, a friend that needs a little cheering up, or if you need a little cheering up, we invite you to take it as well. And I'm going to call upon our Minister of Discipleship who has a few announcements. Good morning. Good morning. Sunday School will be meeting in Fellowship Hall today for combined activity. We will not be going up to the classroom, so just make sure you stop in Fellowship Hall. Next Sunday, we have our rescheduled Bible quest. This was rescheduled from earlier in the spring when schedules were very difficult. And so we will have several of our third graders and older who have not yet received their Bibles, exploring their Bibles and the church as they learn how to use them so that they can receive their Bibles on Bible Sunday. In case you missed it in the Hilltop News, the winning joke from last week was submitted by Sandy Hayes. She has a gift card to Richardson's with her name on it in my office. And here's the winning joke, in case you missed it. A man is in the woods and suddenly a bear pops out and starts chasing him. The man is terrified and begins to pray. He prays frantically, Lord, please make this bear more Christian. Suddenly the bear bows his head and begins praying, Dear Lord, thank you for the food I am about to receive. <laughs> so congratulations to Sandy and thank you for everyone who submitted lots of fun jokes for a fun service last week for Holy Hilarity. And I believe Nancy Thorne has an announcement. Good morning. Good morning. Um, our church rummage sale for April, sponsored by Faith Circle, will be Friday, April 26th, and Saturday morning, April 27th. Saturday is also the town-wide yard sale. Starting next Monday, April 22nd, we'll be accepting donations of clean used clothing, housewares, and toys in good condition. Please nothing with plugs, electronics, picture frames, or baby furniture. Um, we'd be grateful for any help during the morning hours to unload our donations. We could really use some help. Even an hour or two would be appreciated. We're generally there from eight to noon, just Come on down. Lastly, any youth who would like to help break down on Saturday at noon for about an hour, please let me know. Just one additional announcement. On this Saturday at 3 o'clock, there will be an inquirer's gathering in Putnam Hall. This is an opportunity for those who are new to Union Congregational Church to learn more about us and for those who are ready to join this family and fellowship of faith, new members will be received on Sunday, April 28th. If you are interested in attending the inquirer's gathering, please speak to me following the service. Are there any other announcements? If not, then let us draw near to God's throne of grace and rejoice in the love that is from everlasting to everlasting and is with us even now.
please join me in the call to worship. Come celebrate the goodness of the Lord, who lights the dawn to chase away the darkness. And rolls away the stones of despair. Come celebrate the living Christ, who has called you by name. And is here to lead us along the paths of righteousness. Come celebrate the mystery of the Spirit that can make every breath a blessing. And he calls us to rejoice and be glad. Please join me in the prayer of invocation. God of empty tomb, I come once again with joyful alleluias to praise you for your resurrection love that rolled the stone away and raised Jesus Christ to everlasting life. As I make my way through the week ahead, help me to put my trust in you. When I stumble or stray, restore my soul and lead me back to the paths of righteousness, that I may be a blessing to others in this life, and dwell with you forever in the life to come. This I ask in the name of the risen Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated. The empty tomb tells us that the Apostle Paul was right when he said that nothing in all of creation can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. As we give thanks for that blessing and all of the blessings that we receive from God, let us come now to God's altar with our tithes and our offerings.
Please join me in the prayer of dedication. God of empty tomb and everlasting life, as we celebrate the good news that he has risen, we bring you our tithes and offerings, along with our jubilant hallelujahs. Through our faithful giving and living, we pray that you will touch the hearts of many with the life-changing love of the one who is the resurrection and the life, and now reigns with you and the Holy Spirit as one God forever and ever. Amen. I'd like to invite the children to join me. Good morning. Good morning. I have a question for you. I'm wondering, have you ever felt like you missed out on something? Yeah, what have you missed out on? What can you think of? You've been sick on a day that you've done a very fun project. I thought of that one too. I thought about like missing a field trip because maybe you had a fever. What else? Oh, another missing pajama day because you're sick. Yep. Have you ever missed a birthday party? Like maybe you had somewhere else you had to be and you couldn't go to the birthday party. Yep. What about have you ever missed 
Like if you play a soccer, a soccer game, or a cheer game, or a basketball game, or any other game you've missed because maybe you had something else you had to do. What about, now I don't think this happens to you as much as it used to happen to all of us back before we could watch whatever we wanted at any time, but have you ever gone to the movie theater or a play and you had to go to the bathroom? <laughs> and then you missed a part of it? And then you were like, what happened? I don't know what happened. It used to happen more often when um, we couldn't just watch things when we wanted to. But did you know that in today's Bible story, somebody missed out on something? When Jesus was resurrected, the disciples, those were the people that followed Jesus, they went and they saw that Jesus was resurrected. But Thomas was one of them. He wasn't there. He decided not to go. And do you think the disciples were excited when they saw Jesus resurrected? Yeah, and do you think they wanted to talk about it? So do you think maybe they told Thomas about it? Yeah, they told Thomas how amazing it was and how wonderful it was and what a blessing it was. And do you know what Thomas said? Thomas said, I don't believe it unless I see it, unless I touch the risen Christ, I do not believe it. And he felt left out. But a few days later, he got a second chance he went with the disciples this time, and he got to see the resurrected Jesus. And do you, I know, right? We've got some excited faces. We're very excited up here. And did you know that the same thing is true for us, that we get second chances too? And did you know we're also disciples? Everybody in this room is a disciple. We follow Jesus. And we have this wonderful community of disciples in our church. And so if we ever forget how to follow Jesus, or if we're ever sick and can't come to church, or if we just have questions about God or Jesus, we always get to come back to our church family of disciples where we get to read about Jesus and learn about Jesus together. We get to pray and sing together about Jesus. And we always get to come back, and our church family is always waiting for us. You know who else is always waiting for us? God. God is always with us, no matter what we're doing or where we are. And that's a pretty amazing gift, don't you think? I think so. And I think Celeste is going to lead us in the prayer today. So come on up, and we're going to pray. Dear God, we thank you for giving us your son, Jesus, so that we can learn how to follow you. Thank you for people like Thomas that teach us how Jesus is with us, even when we question him. Help us work together so that we may show each other to know you are with us even when we can't see it. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Please be seated. Please join me in the responsive call to prayer. Draw near to God, and God will draw near to you. Good people, let us enter into this time of stillness that we might be one with our God.
My friends, are there prayers that you would like to lift up this day? Yes, Brenda. Uh, my uncle Wayne Campbell is um, starting, uh, well, he just had his first one, uh, a new drug for the multiple myeloma. He has the same disease that Kate's got. So um, he's down at Fox Chase for six weeks, um, and he's having a tough time with the second treatment. So. Ah, so we lift up Brenda's uncle Wayne, who is undergoing new treatments for multiple myeloma, and we pray that those treatments will be healing. Lord, in your goodness. Yes, Leslie. Uh, just prayers for peace in the Middle East. Yes, we have, we've um, certainly seen the unfolding trauma, tragedy, and we pray with all of our hearts that peace may come to that troubled part of the world and everywhere where people live in the shadows of violence. Lord, in your goodness. Yeah. Also lift up in celebration, Betty Wormstead, and she has a new great-grandson, Thomas Griffiths III, who was born on April 1st. We ask that blessings be upon him and his family. Lord, in your goodness. We continue to pray for Harriet Tamian's family as they say their sacred goodbyes. Lord, in your goodness. Pam Denning has asked us to pray for her neighbor, Jose, who has been admitted to Jocelyn Diabetes Center. We pray for healing for him. Lord, in your goodness. Also, Meredith Turner has asked us to pray for her granddaughter, Laura, who has just been deployed to Iraq. We pray for her and all soldiers who were in harm's way. Lord, in your goodness. We also lift up Bill Ledudas. He is Janet Nakosha's father. He is in the final hours of his journey here on Earth. She has asked that we pray for a quick and peaceful passing today. Lord, in your goodness. Yeah. Want to give thanks for the care ministry and all of those who helped and served and baked for the collation following the service yesterday for Harriet Tamian. There were so many people who were just full of compliments and thanks for this important ministry. Lord, in your goodness. We continue to pray for Shelley Carmichael's father, Tom, who has been diagnosed with bone cancer. We ask that God's spirit be upon him and his family. Lord, in your goodness. We pray for the people of Gaza, families of the hostages, people of Ukraine and all who suffer from the shame of violence. Lord, in your goodness. Also, Mike Lilly, Rachel Wood's boyfriend, was at Spalding Rehab, but has now been discharged and he is at home receiving uh, home health care and continuing therapy. We give thanks for his progress and pray that God's healing will continue to rest upon him. Lord, in your goodness. Also, a prayer of celebration. Some of you may know Evelyn Knox. She has not been worshiping with us uh, the last several months. Uh, she lives with her daughter in Lexington. I happened to call her yesterday and discovered that on February 14th, she celebrated her 100th birthday. So we rejoice with you, Evelyn, and pray that God will continue to bless you. Lord, in your goodness, yeah. let us pray. God of healing and a hope that is always there to fill our hearts with the joy here in your peaceful sanctuary. And we continue to celebrate the miracle of the empty tomb. Here in the promise of your sanctuary, we praise you for your boundless love that is always there to weave miracles, great and small, into our lives. Holy One, help us as we make our way through the week ahead to see in the world around us and in one of others your grace at work. Help us to be an Easter people who seek to bring healing in through the midst of pain, reconciliation into the midst of anger, 
and love to those who have no song in their hearts. This we pray and promise as disciples of the risen Christ, who is the resurrection and the life. Amen. This morning's reading is from the book of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands in his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. This ends the reading of the Word of God. Thank you, David. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts upon the sacred scripture be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and always our Redeemer. Amen. You have to wonder if Thomas actually did it. What do you think? Did Thomas actually put his finger and his hand into the wounds that Jesus received while he was on the cross? Now, just so we're all on the same page here, this is what we know. When Jesus appeared to the disciples in that room, behind those locked doors, Thomas wasn't there. We also know that when the disciples told Thomas that they had seen the risen Lord, Thomas got 
really pouty and petty. In fact, he issued an ultimatum. He said to the other disciples, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into the wound in his side, I will never believe. Thomas talked really tough that day. But things were very different eight days later when the risen Christ appeared once again in that room and told Thomas to put his hand and his finger into the wounds. Now, there's nothing in the story that says that Thomas actually did that. Instead, what we're told is that as soon as Jesus told him to do that, Thomas said, my Lord and my God. That makes sense to me. In fact, I don't know about you, but if our risen Savior invited me to put my hand and my finger into his wounds, my response would have been a definite, ew. I probably would have said, thank you, Jesus. That's okay, I'm good. What happened that day reminds me of the Sunday school teacher who shared the parable of the Good Samaritan with the children in her class. She began by telling them about the traveler who was attacked by robbers and then left half dead in a ditch beside the road. She went on to tell the, teacher, to the children uh, about a priest who saw the man lying there and didn't stop to help. She then told them about a Levite who was on his way to help the priest in the temple. When he saw the man lying there, he didn't stop to help him. Finally, she told them about the good Samaritan who saw the man lying there, half dead in the ditch, and he stopped to help him. He went out of his way to help him. The teacher then asked the children a question. So she said, what would you do if you saw a really bloody man lying half dead in a ditch along the side of the road? Immediately, a little girl raised her hand and said, I'd throw up. <laughs> Makes sense to me. What do you think? Actually, here's a much better question for you. It's a question that can make your life a whole lot better. And the question is this, have you ever wondered why Jesus still had the wounds after he was raised from the dead? Remember now, we're not talking here about scars, we're talking about full-blown wounds. Now, in a way, that doesn't make any sense. That's because one of the great promises of the Christian faith is that in the life to come, all of our physical ailments will be a thing of the past. It means that the little girl who was born with cerebral palsy won't be sitting in a wheelchair with someone there to feed her. She'll be sitting on her own at that heavenly banquet table and feeding herself. The friend who was blind will be able to see the mother who was paralyzed after she had a stroke not only will be standing there, but waving to welcome you home when the time comes for you to leave this world. The wife who had Alzheimer's will recognize you and call you by name. So if that's all true for you and for me, why did Jesus still have the wounds after he was raised from the dead? Well, when you look at what happened that day, first of all, it's clear that the wounds were there to help the disciples recognize him and to understand that Jesus really had risen from the dead. Beyond that, though, those wounds, they're a reminder to people of faith like us that evil is very real and we should never underestimate it. After all, evil is what sent an innocent Jesus to that cross. 
And when you look at everything that's going on right now, is there any doubt that evil is still alive and with us today? In fact, ask yourself this question. Is there any doubt that the risen Christ is horrified by the suffering that is being experienced by the people in Gaza and the families of those hostages and people all across Ukraine? Yes, there's no doubt that those wounds are a reminder that people of faith should never underestimate the power of evil and the ability of human beings to be inhumane to other human beings. But it isn't all doom and gloom this morning because those wounds, believe it or not, can also make people's lives a whole lot better. Those wounds that are still there can make your life a whole lot better. Consider, if you will, a story that was told many years ago by the great evangelist and preacher Dwight Moody. He once told a story about an elderly woman of great faith who was always cheerful and optimistic even though she was an invalid and was rarely able to get out of bed. She lived in a tiny attic apartment on the fifth floor of an old run-down building. One day, a friend went to visit the saintly old woman, and she brought with her another woman from their church. This other woman was very well off. When they got to the old rundown building, they had to use the stairs because there wasn't an elevator. When they got to the second floor, the well-to-do woman shook her head and said, this is such a dreary and filthy place. The first woman quickly reassured her and said, it's better higher up. When they got to the third floor, the well-to-do woman shook her head again and said, this is even worse. Once again, the first woman reassured her and said, it's better higher up. When they finally got to the tiny attic apartment on the fifth floor, they found the saintly old woman lying in her bed, and she greeted them with a smile that came from a heart that was full of peace and joy. The tiny little apartment was clean and neat, and there were some flowers on the windowsill. Even so, the well-to-do woman couldn't believe how dreary and run down the apartment was. And so, without thinking about it, she blurted out, it must be very hard for you to live like this. Immediately, the saintly old woman reassured her and said, it's better higher up. Good people, those wounds can make your life a whole lot better. It can change your attitude about the world around us. It can change your attitude about people in general. It can change your attitude about yourself. Never forget that Jesus suffered those wounds on the cross because of his love for you. Never forget that Jesus suffered those wounds on the cross because he believes in you. Never, ever forget that he suffered those wounds on the cross and he has those wounds still because he wants you to know that he believes in you and he wants to bring out the best in you. In a way, it's similar to what happened many, many years ago when Leonardo da Vinci started a painting but didn't finish it. He then asked one of his students to finish the painting for him. The student was shocked by the invitation and made it very clear that the student was unworthy and unable to finish the master's painting. After all, Da Vinci was a great artist. The student was a nobody. Da Vinci was a genius. The student was a man of ordinary means. Well, Leonardo da Vinci listened to all of the reasons why 
the student couldn't finish the painting. And then he asked him a question. He said to the student, will not what I have done inspire you to do your best? Good people, that is the question that our Savior is asking you as we continue to celebrate the miracle of the empty tomb. Will not what he has done inspire you to do your best? When you look at it that way, you begin to realize that there is an amazing, wonderful blessing waiting for you when you have a faith that is full of holes. Amen. People of God, our service of worship has ended. Let us prepare to go forth wherever we may be to continue our service of love, knowing that our God goes before us. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Creator Christ and Holy Spirit, be upon you all. Amen.